Welcome to The Verge Live for the iPhone 6 slash Apple Watch event. Um, I'm Ross Miller. I'm Chris Sigler. And that's it for formalities. We just want to talk about Apple shit for a little bit, so... Uh, Let's do it. Wearables! Yes! I can't believe yes. you just put a slap and I bracelet on you. my wrist. I want it, I'll take it. Uh, by the way, there's nothing, I don't know why we have a slap bracelet prop, because there's nothing slappy Correction, about... Correction, we have two. We do have two uh, props, yes, Thank that's you. true. Uh, all right, let's get started. So the big thing today, of course, Apple announced the iPhone 6, as expected, yes. iPhone 6 Plus. It's exactly as it was leaked. Yes. They also went... 4.7 and 5.5. 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch screen. We'll get to that. The Apple Watch we'll talk about later in the show. And of course, all our friends in San Francisco will be here as yes. soon as they're done doing all the hands-ons. And we'll have the way more interesting first-hand information on this. So yeah. if you have questions, hashtag AskVerge on Twitter. We'll be checking it. We'll be able to answer... Hopefully, we'll help be able to answer a little bit of it. If not, San Francisco will answer it for mm -hmm. us. And let's just kind of get into it. So you've done enough Apple events. I've done a few in my time. Yes. Let's talk about the big thing. First off, a new venue entirely. New well, venue. Well, old venue. Old venue is new again. Uh, yes. This is where they introduced the original Macintosh some 25 years ago. So mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of nostalgia, I think. Um, Tim Cook mentioned it first thing when they uh, when they started today. Um, and it's huge, right? The, the, the venues that they normally use, Yerba Buena Center in... Um, in San Francisco, primarily, isn't uh, isn't nearly as big as the Flint Center where they where they uh, they held this event today. So they obviously wanted a, mu a much larger crew on hand. Right. They got it. They filled that that uh, theater up, and then of course they built that enormous box right outside the uh, the trailer. Which is is that U 2s dressing room or is that the hands on booth? Uh, both, hopefully. <laughs> I, I I can only imagine that Bono was getting dressed this morning amongst Apple watches. Uh, amongst his Apple staff, too. The Apple like, staff. He's, he's got a purse for each item of clothing yes. and just fits it in. Yes, he does. Except the sunglasses. Those have never come off. Right, no. Not no. since after uh, Zeropa. Really. Right. Right. No, before that, I think. It was, that was like Joshua Tree era, No, no, I no. Think. He didn't wear sunglasses during Joshua Tree. Which oh, he didn't? I, no, I think like, all that you can leave behind is a confirmation. Okay. I think Pop, Zeropa... I, I'm a look. I'm a big YouTube fan. <laughs> apparently, I, apparently, I like dad music sometimes. This is Zoo TV, by the way, for Zoo, Zoo yeah. fans. Um, but anyway, let's, let's talk about the, uh, <laughs> let's, talk the about let's talk about the uh, the, the phones stuff. and okay. not you too. So the leaks were a hundred percent spot on. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, this is the first departure, like complete departure in industrial design since the four, right? I mean, yeah. if, if you consider the four, the four S, the five, and the five S birds of a feather, this is the first complete departure from that right. to it's, rounder design. You could argue the that, the, that the, you know, the 4S to the 5 is like slightly stretched. Obviously, yeah. the, the original to the 3G like right. changed the back. But no, this is a stark de departure. And it's, right. you're at least, you know, it, it's, it's starting to look like some of the other phones we've seen out there in the world. Well, there, you know, we, this is a, a point that's been made a number of times in the past. It's, there are only so many ways you can skin a cat. There are only so many ways you can present a glass rectangle. Right. And I think that this is a, <laughs> one of the biggest uh, challenges for industrial designers from here on out, which might explain why they, they hired uh, uh, Newson, right? Mark because Newsom, like, yeah. um, very, very weirdly, on a Friday night, they broke that, they broke that news of Andy Fair. Hey, Newson uh, wanted to get hired on a Friday, and by God, he got hired on a Friday. So um, wants, man. But uh, he, he is a superstar designer in his own right, and I mm -hmm. think that um, you're probably going to see more of that, uh, these, these superstar designer partnerships with smartphone makers, because, they're, again, there are only so many ways that you can make these phones look. Um, and, uh, and I think that that at least partially explains why you're seeing Apple explore watches now, right? They, they we're, we're approaching this sort of steady state with the smartphone, I think. And then they're going to move into this other this other field. Um, but the, the, the uh, you know the, the the six and the six plus are still very interesting devices. Right. So it, it, it amazes me how many people uh, want a much larger iPhone. Like it, it's just not my thing. But Sam Sheffer, who is sitting just beyond the view of the camera here, right. is uh, absolutely chomping at the bit for a five point five inch six plus. I don't get it, uh, but. I'm sure, like him, there are probably millions of Wait, people. What, what do you use? What do you use? So until very recently, I was using a, a 5S. Okay. Uh, totally comfortable with the four-inch size. Now I'm on uh, a Nexus 5, uh, which is shattered into a million pieces, <laughs> slightly larger. Um, and I'll probably right. be getting a Moto 6 this month, which is 5.2. But Wait, a Moto 6? 
Moto, or the Moto, Moto X. New Moto X. Excuse me. Uh, which is 5.2. <laughs> um, but 5.5, I don't know. There's something. You, uh, I think Neelai just made the point on Twitter a few minutes ago that uh, it's it's hard to see how or why you would get a an i an iPad Mini if you have the six plus because the the, the display sizes are just so similar. Um, right. And I, I do think that they're starting to blend really really blend those two genres, right? The uh, right. the small tablet and the big phone. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I, I'm assuming Apple's going to have an iPad event later this year. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. Just like what becomes the iPad Mini, which is still right. a much different size. I mean, no one. It, it is, but the 5.5. I mean, looking at the pictures. I mean, you have to. I mean, I, I guess we have some 5.5 inch phones or thereabouts in the office mm -hmm. that we can use as a rough comparison. But that's a big phone. Once you get to the mid fives. That starts to feel really big in hand, and of course there are a couple that are six and beyond, which is just insane. Right. Uh, and then you have things like the Sony Z Ultra, which is just out of control. Um, right. But it, it's, if, even if it's just like down to app ecosystem, like you know, with right. the iPad, you don't always get a, you know a steady cellular connection. You don't always buy it, you know, sell it as such. But also, right. there are iPad only you know apps, which may change now. You also that's a very good point. You also can't hold an iPad Mini to your face. Well, I mean, you can, but it wouldn't do any any good. <laughs> Absolutely. Whereas with a uh, <laughs> <laughs> a six plus, you're more than welcome to hold it to your face. Right. Um, but what, what else is it? So you know, it's a new design. It's thinner than the iPhone 5s, and I'm thinner, actually, yep. I forgot how thin this thing is. I use a Mophie case because the battery yeah. life is shit on this. But yeah. Like this feels thin to me, and now it's right. like actually it's noticeably different. Well, you know, a um, I can't remember which OEM told me this, but several years ago, an OEM told me that they've conducted a lot of uh, focus group testing where they've kind of discovered that the point of diminishing returns with smartphone thickness where consumers can no, uh, can no longer really tell the difference nor care about the difference is somewhere between five and six millimeters. Okay. And so I think what you're going to see in the industry, for better or for worse, is these companies, Apple included, are going to keep pushing for that five to six millimeter thickness. And then only once they get to that point technologically will they say, okay, we're going to stop trying to make this thing thinner and we're going to focus on battery performance, right? right. Because I, what has always frustrated me, even going back to like the, the 3G, 3GS, iPhone 4 days, is that the, instead of keeping the same thickness, which people are happy with, mm -hmm. and uh, just making the battery bigger or you know more potent, they insist on making the phone thinner and keeping battery life roughly the same. And I think we would all agree that... Um, Battery performance on these phones is about somewhere between 20 and 30 percent shorter than it really needs to be for that sense of confidence that no matter what happens over the course of the day, you're going to be able to make it through to the end. Like I've, I've definitely had days where this happens a lot at like CES, where you get up at you know 5:36 in the morning, you're working until 11, 10, or 10, 11 midnight at night. Uh, your phone's not going to make it. Um, for an average day, nine to five is not a problem, but uh, but it would be nice to have a phone that just focuses on battery life, which is why I've always sort of extolled the, the virtues of the the Max line that Motorola used to make. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Right. We'll see. Um, we'll, we'll we'll see how 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 uh, how the battery does on these. But it 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 sounds. I mean, they even said it on stage that the emphasis was on preserving battery performance versus the 5S, not improving it. Right, and it still needs to be better than it is they're announcing. You're right, and we'll get to that. I do want to talk about some of the questions that we're getting already. Hashtag Ask Verge, and I don't need to actually say that because clearly you guys know that already. Um, a lot of things about Apple Watch we'll get to, but uh, difference between six and six plus. Um, I I was watching the video yep. feed kept coming out for me. Mm -hmm. I know the camera's different. Obviously, the screen size is different. What else? Uh, battery, I, I don't know if we have um, uh, battery capacities offhand, the milliamp hours, but the 6 Plus does obviously have a larger battery. And as you mentioned, the 6 Plus has optical image stabilization in the camera. The, the sensor is the same, and they both have digital image stabilization. The 6 Plus just adds optical as well. Other phones, uh, Android phones have had that in the past, but it'll be interesting to have that on an iPhone because, of course, iPhones are known for just having really good image quality. So I think it's going to make a big difference for them. Um, other than that, I, I think they're they're pretty much the, the same phone as right. far as I can tell. It's just the size of you know of the screen size, the size in your pocket. Yeah. Uh, and the price of course, is it a hundred dollars difference? Hundred dollars difference. One thing that we should talk about that. So the, the way they've structured it with the, the six, uh, it's a one ninety nine to two ninety nine jump for a forty eight gigabyte 
increase in storage capacity, right? You go to from 16 to 64. Uh, is that 48? I'm not good with numbers. I think <laughs> that's, that's 48. <laughs> um, whereas uh, before that would have been a 16 to 32 jump. Right. So, um, so it seems like they're finally acknowledging that uh, you know, uh, flash prices are coming down. They're saying, okay, 64 is the sweet spot. And uh, I, you know, I'll be honest, I, I'm, I'm a very cloud-centric person, but I, so many friends of mine and family members have said, you know, 64 is not enough. Mm -hmm. I need more storage, either because they're taking just billions of pictures or they're downloading a ton of music or what, what have you. So they, the, uh, they've uh, topped these phones out to 128. Which is three ninety nine for the six and four ninety nine for the six plus, I think. Right, so it now tops out five hundred dollars. Right, one. and they they've just skipped thirty two entirely, which is funny to me because I've always bought the thirty two model. Thirty two to me is the sweet spot, and they've taken that away and said no. Now sixty four is the sweet spot. Sixteen is the entry level. But yeah, sixteen is just it's just not enough. And no, like, sixteen is not enough. And I like mean, our, like that's the point where like not only can you safely assume that you're not going to be able to to download any movies for flights. But it's, it's also to the point where it's like, you have to start to be careful with apps, especially if you're a gamer, right? Because some of these games are one, two, three gigabytes. No, no, yeah, I didn't know, like, the story that I have is like, when we were doing, uh, when Addy did the, uh, the Bioshock for iPhone, yeah. we tried it out, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll put it on my phone, whatever, yeah. I have the phone here, and then I realized I had to like, delete every app I had, Facebook, half my pictures, you know, clear out Pocket, Spotify, offline. Worth it for Bioshock. I <laughs> not for an iPhone. I delete that immediately, and like this weird sense of like emptiness, where it's like, what did I do with all that data? Yeah, now it's just all gone. Yeah. Um, but so it's yeah, just, I, sixteen just seems like ridiculously small. Yeah, like, I, I think their volume seller is going to be the sixty-four, and I think we're going to be surprised at how many one twenty-eights they sell. I'm going to be like, I don't know. Like, do we have numbers on like which size, like which sizes do well? I have to imagine the entry entry level is the best seller. It's the cheapest one. I want an Maybe, iPhone for the cheapest. I, you know, so first of all, I, I don't think that we, ha we certainly don't have official numbers on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would actually guess that the 32 is the sweet spot. Maybe I'm wrong. 32 always felt like the sweet spot to me. Um, because, it's, you know, it's a nice balance between cost and, and capacity. Right. Um, but but yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're getting rid of 32 entirely. Yep. And then, uh, so then of course, there's the... Uh, a couple of things. So there was optical image stabilization for the iPhone 6 Plus. That's yep. not in the iPhone 6. We talked yep. about that. Uh, there's a one-touch mode. Was it reachability? We're like, yeah. we know our phones are bigger, so we're just going to cut off half the screen, bring everything down, and if you got to touch the top. Right. Well, well how, how did that work? So the, it, it's a double tap of the home button, right? Or, right. Uh, and that, that brings the buttons within reach. Um, yeah, they, they had to do something, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a tough... It's a tough call because Apple has to walk back years of saying that that four inches is the sweet spot for these devices. Which oh, it, I mean, you know, they, they walk back by just not saying it. Of course, like they're not going right. to. No, not no, apologize. no. Of course, but but it also means that they need to adopt solutions that feel weird or frankly a little stolen. I mean, you know, uh, other other uh, vendors who've explored um, five inch plus phones have implemented one-handed modes. Mm -hmm. uh, Samsung has one. Uh, and it's just something that you have to do in order to make the phone usable at that size. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, this is certainly true, as true now as it, as it ever has been. Like, if you're listening to what Apple is saying, then you're not really paying attention to, what it, to the direction that they're going. And I think that this is a perfect example of that, right? Like, 4.7 to 5.5, if you go back even two or three years, you would have said, well, there's no way they're ever going to make a phone that size. Right. Uh, even though the market pressure might be there, they're just philosophically, that's not where they're at. And yet here we are today, 4.7, 5.5. Right. So let, let's move on. Let's talk about the thing that like is that applies to all Apple products now or will apply to all Apple products. Um, it's kind of a good transition between this and the watch, and that's the Apple Pay. That's NFC payments. Yeah. Which... This is... Um, I mentioned this on Twitter earlier. You know, the, um, the payments, the mobile payments thing is a great example of a technology where, um, you know, uh, Apple is not quote unquote innovating here, but they are legitimizing a space that has so far been kind of a, a, a cluster, so to speak. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know, Google, um, Google Wallet hasn't been broadly accepted with, uh, with US carriers. Um, 
uh, because of, of weird business things. Well, it was um, what? It was Verizon was supporting the company's name, I can't remember, who used to be called ISIS and obviously changed it. Softcard. Softcard. Yep. So yeah, that's the that's the other thing. Softcard has has been a very a very carrier centric uh, technology um, that has seen, as far as as I can tell, close to zero adoption, um, and uh, and that's because they put their business priorities first. I mean, Tim Cook said this on stage today. It's well, when you're when you're talking about a technology like this, it can't be about putting these business priorities first. It has to be about putting the user experience first. And because they, you're just not going to get people to use this thing unless it, it works seamlessly and it works like cash. Well, that's the way to say it, but I'm sure like there are business priorities that are at hand. And of course, the fact that if you're on Apple, you're in a huge market. You will be in a huge market. And they've got sure. support of a ton of banks, obviously American Express, Visa, MasterCard. Top six banks, uh, yeah, MX, uh, MasterCard, Visa, that's huge for mm -hmm. them. Um, I think this has a very real. I mean, considering the the market buy-in that they have, and the market saturation they're going to get with these devices, they, I think they have a very real chance of of getting penetration with mobile payments in the in the U.S. market that they haven't seen before. Right, and like um, the support is amazing. You've got McDonald's, you've yeah, got, and Starbucks. I'm assuming I don't remember if they yep. said that or not. Yeah. Disney World, whatever. Mm -hmm. All your pharmacies. So Starbucks. Funny thing about that is that it's supported, but they didn't mention it. Oh, like okay. it was it was pictured on a slide, and you'd think they would want to bring that up because Starbucks is a pretty it's big huge. deal. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, they didn't mention it. Oh wow. Um, but yeah, you know, today I like I like I mentioned I use a Nexus Five, um, and I use Tap to Pay all the time. Do you really? Yes, and every single time I get a weird or sometimes a dirty look, like, "What are you doing? Are you hacking my my credit card machine?" <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and and sometimes what'll happen, this happens with 7-Elevens a lot, um, you'll tap and it'll look like it's working and then it says denied and then you have to swipe with your card anyway. So I think that Apple adding support for that, like I said, really legitimizes that market in a way that it hasn't been before and companies like 7-Eleven are just gonna have to say, okay, we're supporting this now. Right, so is, is the compatibility there? Like if you're supporting, if you're at McDonald's and your yeah. little kiosk or whatever supports uh, Apple payment or whatever, Apple Pay. Do you need a different set of hardware or software technology to make it work with? I, you know, I, I don't think they mentioned that on stage, but I can't. Let's put it this way: I can't imagine that they do. Right. Uh, because if if they did, that's just a that's a, a no sale, right? Right. I mean, they're you know, that's that's a speed bump that they would have a very hard time getting over. All right, which apparently they've they found a way to do, or at least Apple has in this case. But yeah, well, I mean, the, you know, the the phones themselves are just. NFC, right? So it might be who knows. It might be a, a software package that they deploy uh, that they deploy to the to the actual credit card kiosks that have the NFC sensors built in. Maybe it's a you know firmware update. Who knows? But uh, but I, I I can't imagine that that they they would have deployed or developed Apple Pay with the idea that you need to um, you know put new kiosks in stores. Just can't imagine. I can't mean, imagine. I, I would hope. if they did, they would have made a big deal. Of course, right. they would have announced that. Right. Um, so great. Or maybe, no, actually, maybe they wouldn't have because Apple is very good at not mentioning sad news during events. <laughs> uh, that would constitute sad news. They discontinued. They very, very quietly discontinued the, uh, the iPod Classic. It's dead today. now. It's dead. Wait, officially. The Classic. Yes. Is the Nano still alive? Nano, I, I don't. I think Has the, the Nano been is dead still for alive. Because it looks exactly like the watch, and that's confusing. Uh, oh no 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 that one no remember they placed they that's replaced it with that needed, like rectangular yeah, one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that's no that's the one with its weird own platform or whatever right right which looks vaguely <laughs> iOS esque but is not uh, yeah the um, the iPod Classic rest in peace um, it, it it is a little funny to me that they uh, yeah we need a forty that we can just, pour out I mean can we get can we just get beers to pour out here and like bowls. But again, they would have to be, not beers, Ross, malt liquors. We don't have malt liquor here. <laughs> Believe it or not, we have a lot of alcohol between the three floors of Vox Media and New York. We do not have malt liquor. That's unfortunate. I have asked. <laughs> that um, is a non, that's a deal breaker. It, I mean, this is, this is a device that, that was, um, look, we've all owned an iPod Classic at one time or another. I own several going back to 2001 or whatever it was. Right. And uh, yeah, it had a good run. Um, but it's just, when you think of the market power that the name iPod had, um, even five years ago, but certainly seven, 10 years ago, to just see that evaporate and be replaced, 
first with iPhone and iPad, and now with they've gotten rid of the i moniker altogether for the Apple Watch. It's just kind of striking to see that you know that they've essentially buried this this uh, extraordinary branding tool, you know, mm -hmm. uh, willfully. Um, but you know that that's that's the death of a market. And they recognized it and they moved on to smartphones. So yeah. what and do you do? It's on, you know on a dumbly personal note for me, like the first iPod I ever got was the U2 iPod. Again, oh yeah, un, un, unashamed. The, the black one with the red ring. Yes. Yeah, isn't a good looking. Unabashedly love U2, and I had to get it, and that was yep. the first Apple product I ever had. And it had and their it signatures on the back, right? Did. Laser engraved. Yeah. That scratched off like immediately, like a month <laughs> into it. Yeah. Um, and nothing said, like, I am a white suburban kid in the South, like, <laughs> I have a U2 iPod. <laughs> but, so to see U2 again, that's just like, just stop everything. I know? thought that you only listened to R.E.M., isn't that George's band? It's an Athens band, yeah, but of course they also had, you know, B-52s, had Rock Lobster. We're not talking about this right now. The B-52s are from Georgia? Yeah, they're from Athens. Wow, didn't know that. Yeah, I can tell you where the love shack is. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but like, in the U2 thing, we need. We should talk about Apple Watch first. That's what people care about. But yeah. I do want to talk about the YouTube thing later because that's just me. You're we should deal with it. But, yeah. We uh, should have a separate show devoted to YouTube. God, that would be the <laughs> lamest show ever. But it would be just full of drunken people just chugging Guinness, covering themselves in Guinness, remembering the good old days, arguing yeah. over which tour yeah. an album was yeah. the best. And anyway, let's move on. Yeah. Um, okay. So. And again, if you're just joining us, obviously, we're waiting for the San Francisco crew to do all the hands-on video, give their impressions, and then as soon as they're done with that, they're going to run out of the giant white cube. There's a camera crew waiting for them, and we're going to go live and talk to them and get more information. Um, until such time, though, uh, we're going to keep answering your questions. That is hashtag AskVerge on Twitter. And um, we're just kind of going down the list a little more casually than just like seeing them. We're prodding each other for it. But, uh, I mean, let's... Get into Apple Watch now. Yes, yeah. let's let's yeah. do that. And um, we actually have uh, video hands on. John, do we have that <coughs> available? We can just kind of watch that. Yeah. So we're gonna watch the uh, Apple Watch hands on. Watch it together, and we'll kind of talk about that and answer some of your questions. All right, we're at Apple's big event here. We finally know what's inside the big box. It is the Apple Watch. First thing you need to know is it won't be available until early 2015. It's going to start at uh, 349. Uh, there's a whole bunch of features on here. The most important one for Apple is this uh, digital crown, uh, which we're running through a demo loop here, so we won't actually see it do anything. But it is a zoom, uh, and it also lets you scroll through stuff. It's their primary interface for this watch. However, it also has a touch screen. It measures two different kinds of tabs. You can just tap it, but it also measures force. So if you tap it hard, they call that a force touch, and that lets you bring up little activities and so on. There's another button on the side here that brings up Apple's custom messaging app, so you can send little drawings to each other. You can also send your heartbeat to each other, which is pretty crazy. Uh, if you swipe up, you get these things called glances, and that's like customizable information letting you see you know, your calendar information and so on. And then uh, notifications pop up. You feel the haptic feedback, they call it. You just turn your wrist up, the screen turns on, and you see it. So that's a super quick look at the, uh, the Apple Watch. I can actually show you this band here as well. And we, can, we can remove it here. I'm not used to how this band works. <laughs> There we go. I'm kind of clumsy. On the back, you can see there's these sensors here, so measuring your heart rate and so on. There's a close look at the digital crown on the side. These straps actually slide right out. They click in and out, which lets you, you know, customize. They've got a whole bunch of different watch straps. It comes in um, two different sizes, and it also comes in lots of different varieties. There's a solid gold one, there's a sports one, and then there's the standard one. So there you go. That's just a very super quick look of the Apple Watch on a demo loop. Okay, that is the Apple Watch. That yeah. is the big change. This is obviously what they thought was the biggest event since 2010's iPad, since 2007's iPhone. Mm -hmm. This is like a landmark moment for them. Yeah, it, we should actually take a moment to recognize that this was, uh, Neil, I mentioned this in, in, in the live blog, this was sort of Tim Cook. The, the, the moment that he said one more thing was the moment that he completed his takeover of Apple, right? Yes. This is now his company. First use of one more thing since uh, Steve Jobs died. Um, and a, a very deserving use of one more thing, I, I think. I think so. Was, was this actually Tim Cook's first time saying one more thing, or did he say it as he took over like the interim CEO position? Uh, that's a good question, uh, but I, I, I can't remember Tim Cook saying one more thing before. I, I can't remember, but anyway, um, that's, that's uh, another topic for another time. We should right. talk about the watch. Um, it, 
I think that their master stroke here, many things to unpack, but yes. I think the master stroke is uh, releasing it in two sizes. I really do. Um, do we know the, what sizes are though? I don't think we have, uh, the, the dimensions might be up on Ample Slate, I'm not okay. sure, uh, but ju just the, the fact that they are acknowledging that watches are not a one size fits all proposition is huge. One of the biggest complaints we've seen with the Android Wear devices so far is that the, the, <coughs> the single size of these, uh, the, the, the single size of these devices um, uh, is, is too big for a lot of wrists. Okay. And so having a smaller size, um, I think, is going to just instantly sell significantly more watches than they'd be able to with a single size. Of course, when you add in all the, the finish combinations and the strap combinations, it right. makes it a very personal device. And I think that there's three different buckets they're putting into the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Sport, and then... The Apple Watch Edition. Is it just called, I thought that was a typo. It's the Apple Watch Edition, yeah. which is just gold. It should be called Apple Watch Edition Apple Watch. <laughs> it's like, the, it's Excuse the me. Apple Watch Edition of the Apple Watch. Right. Uh, but anyway. Um, but like, and I got, I got, I'm very curious how much that one costs, because you're buying basically an 18 karat yeah. gold watch that, yeah. you know, these things last two years, so. Won't be cheap. Yeah, we'll get back into, we'll argue ourselves about that a little bit but I believe we have Dieter Bone. Dieter Bone, are you ready? Is Dieter with I'm us? ready, how's it going? Hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? Good, good. Uh, so tell us about your experience there today. How, how, uh, what's, the, what's the mood like? Uh, I gotta say the mood is pretty uh, ebullient. Uh, there, it's, this is the biggest Apple event I've ever been to. Uh, there's just a ton of people, the keynote itself, uh, was very well run, and in fact, it was quite hectic. Uh, there were definitely a bunch of Apple fans in the audience. I assume a bunch of you know special guests and employees. So there were lots and lots of cheering, um, and then of course this giant white building behind me, where they're holding the actual hands-on area, is also pretty well controlled. Um, and so I actually got a chance to hold you know the the two iPhones and uh, play around with one of the mini editions of the Apple Watch. Uh, so in general, everybody here seems pretty pleased. Um, you know, we'll see what happens when we walk away from the Apple event and have had a few days to think about it. But everybody on site seems pretty pumped by what they're seeing. Okay, so let's talk about the, uh, let's, we were actually just talking about the watch in general. What was your impression? You had the hands-on for us. What is your takeaway from it? So my takeaway uh, is actually that it's kind of like a lot of other Apple products in that it's simultaneously amazing and kind of boring. Uh, now, part of that is that we've already seen a bunch of other smartwatches. We've seen Android Wear, and we've seen the ideas that they have. Um, but if you were to, you know, ask me to tick off all the ideas that we would see in an Apple Watch, they, they pretty much hit all of them. Um, I suppose the, the most interesting part of it is this idea of this, this glance, I think it's called, where you can get, like, extra random information, which is sort of like a, a weird version of Google Now, I guess. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see. The, the, unfortunately, they only had demo units that we could actually, like, touch, and then, you know, the, the actual working units were on the Apple employee wrists. Uh, but overall, the hardware is, you know, it's nice. It's not, like, stunningly beautiful. I personally think the Moto 360 is better looking. But it's a watch, and so other people might prefer, uh, you know, the, what Apple has made. Um, it is nondescript. Uh, you know, it's very well done. It's very pretty. It's, it looks very good. Um, but it's certainly, I guess, inoffensive. It, it, you know, it looks great. It's very well made. It's very well designed. Uh, but it, it doesn't make a very bold statement, as far as I'm concerned. And is this is this digital crown easy to use, or what's what's that like? So the bad news is I haven't actually been able to interact with software using the digital crown. I've seen people interact with it, and it seems very fast and fluid. On the uh, the the unit that I played with, which was you know like it was running through a demo loop, um, I you know I got to like feel the, the physicality of it. And the thing that's really surprising about the crown is that there's almost no resistance to it. There's no like clicking. It doesn't push back when you turn it. It doesn't spin like completely freely, but it spins pretty easily. Uh, and so it felt a little bit weird. Um, but that said, I imagine that when you're actually using it to scroll through lists or to zoom, it'll feel much more natural. Is it something like, do you think it's too sensitive where like I would accidentally bump into this? Um, like if I was like kind of walking across the, like no, hit like, a wall? Like, I don't think so. It, it's small enough and it's, it's inset on the side of the watch enough that it's pretty unlikely that you're going to accidentally spin it by bumping into something. And I also don't think that it's likely you're going to accidentally press it and go home when you don't need to. So let's talk about the iPhones for a second. Uh, of course, there are two sizes, the, the 4.7 yeah. and the 5.5. Uh, tell me about those sizes. Does the 5.5 feel really big? Uh, what's, the, what's the hardware like? 
128 gigabytes. So uh, both the hardware, they're both amazing. Uh, they, they're both just super thin and way lighter than I expected. Uh, everybody wants to know about the 5.5, so yeah, it's big. Um, but what's interesting about it is it's very tall. The bezels on the left and the right are relatively thin. And so when you hold it in your hand and it's got that aspect ratio, it feels like actually holdable in your hand. Um, but once you want to like start doing stuff, you're going to need two hands. Uh, but it doesn't feel nearly as wide as, say, like a Galaxy Note. Uh, I, I guess I'd put it in like the Nexus 5 range in terms of width. Uh, so it's much better to hold in your hand than I expected. Um, and then the best part of it is, you know, you turn it sideways and it turns into, I think I called it an iPad Mini Mini. Uh, so you actually get more stuff on the UI. Uh, the other thing about the hardware that's really neat is the, the glass, I don't know if it curves, but it, it, it catches the light and it feels a little bit different than previous iPhones. It, it feels a little bit more organic and I, I don't know quite what to attribute that to if they put something subtle on the, the finish on the glass, if it's this new uh, type of you know resistant glass that they didn't really give a, a brand name to or what uh, but it, it looks much different in person a little bit glossier and a little bit uh, I don't know, less cold than I expected than uh, previous models which you know you gotta you gotta say you look at the iPhone 5s it's got some pretty sharp lines on it and there's there's not a sharp line to be found on these phones now I want to quickly go back to watch because we're getting a lot of questions uh, from readers right now and the two things that are asking a lot about is one uh, left-handed use because of where like the digital a uh, little crown is, and number two, the battery life. Uh, can you talk about any of that stuff? Well, uh, I'll answer the second question first. I wish I could talk about the battery life, but uh, the closest thing we have is very subtle hints that were maybe dropped during the keynote about how, how easy it is to charge, and it's so easy to charge every night. Uh, so I, unless I missed it because I was live blogging, I didn't hear real battery life numbers. And uh, as near as I can tell, this is probably going to be charged every day. Uh, the, the, the models are very small, and so if they've managed to light up that panel uh, and have some sort of battery revolution, I feel like they would have told us. Uh, since they didn't, uh, I'm guessing that you'll you know, be lucky to get a day out of this. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that. I don't think Apple would release a product that you couldn't do that on. Um, and uh, what was the first question? <laughs> uh, Left-handed use. Left-handed use, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a crown, and like I, I had it on my left wrist, and you know, it, uh, I was I like bent my hand around, and I, I didn't wasn't worried that I was going to be hitting it. Um, if you're a left-hander and you want to put it on your right wrist, um, you know, you'll you'll need to do what all left-handers deal with, which is you know, occlude, you know, the watch face, and, and reach around to get it. But uh, maybe they'll make a left-handed version. But from what I saw, it didn't look all that painful to to use on your your right wrist. So it's, it's uh, pretty rare for Apple to uh, announce a device like this this far in advance. Of course, they did it with the Mac Pro. They did it with the original iPhone. So yeah. it does happen, but it's, it's fairly rare. What do you think about this, uh, this strategy of, of, uh, of announcing the iPhone 6, which is going to be available next week, and then at the same time announcing uh, the, the Apple Watch that uh, is coming out so at some point in early 2015? Do you think that that was a, a wise move or, or no? Oh, I think it was a totally wise move. I mean, what, what does Apple have to lose by announcing this early? Unless they don't, miss, miss, unless they don't hit their release date, uh, it's not like they're cannibalizing any current Apple products except maybe, maybe a Nano, but like, I don't think so because this thing works with an iPhone. Um, you know, they might manage to hold off people from buying Android Wear devices in the meantime, which is a, a win for Apple. So uh, I don't really see what they lose here other than you know, not having the, oh my God, I can buy it right now moment. Uh, but other than that, like, you know, they're going to have time for people to make apps for this thing. They're going to have time to, you know, nail the battery life if that's actually a question on this. We don't know. Uh, I don't see, other than missing the Christmas season, what hurts them there. I think that it's going to be just fine. Let me ask you guys a question, actually. Uh, so there's, there's the Apple Watch, there's the Apple Watch Sport, uh, there's the Apple Watch Edition. I heard you guys talking about this beforehand. And then there's just a whole slew of different uh, strap options. Um, I, like, in the room with all the different variants of all these different watches, and then, you know, the two size options as well, like, had an actually tough time, like, you know, making sure I caught everything and, like, telling them apart. I think this thing is going to be so customizable uh, that although you'll be able to tell an Apple Watch from a mile away, uh, I don't think very many people are all going to have, you know, the exact same thing on their wrist. Uh, uh, what's your take on, like, the, all the different variants that you, you guys saw from, from your end? Yeah, I think customizability is absolutely, I mean, I, I, I've been 
preaching this for as long as I can remember with, uh, with smartwatches and, and wearables in general. I think that more than any other kind of consumer electronic, it's really important that they be hyper-customizable. Um, and if, if, if there's one yeah. thing that Apple did extremely right with that device today, it was make it available in, a, in two sizes, right? Because we've heard, as I was mentioning before, we've heard a lot of complaints about Android Wear uh, being too big on some wrists. So I think that having those two sizes um, is, is super important. And actually, I, let, me, let me toss it back to you. Um, is the small one a lot smaller? Uh, than uh, than existing Android Wear devices that we've seen, or give us a sense of the relative size between the two. You know, uh, I, I haven't actually gotten a chance to look at the two of them right next to each other, but I would say that the relative size is not that different. Um, and that if the big watch offers significantly better battery life, uh, even if you've got small wrists, I think it's a way to go. Uh, in terms of comparing it to uh, Android Wear devices, I mean, it's way smaller than a Moto 360. Uh, just like it, it's. In the same way that like a Pebble is smaller than a Moto 360, there's actually, uh, like in terms of size, it's actually not that far off from a Pebble. But because it's so rounded and, and so much better made and just nicer looking, it, it feels like a different watch. Uh, and, and you know, the Pebble's got those sharp edges on the Pebble steel. Um, so you know, it it feels like a watch. It feels it's it's a little bit thicker than maybe some people would like, uh, but it's certainly not the you know the big honking things like the Moto 360 to put in your wrist. And it it looks way better than say even the the LG G Watch, the original Square Watch, which is pretty nondescript. Um, it's not that much smaller than the G Watch uh, from what I remember, but it just it feels way smaller and looks way better because of how much better designed it is. I do want to talk about a little bit more about the software things. I think you know there's a lot of like hyper customizable. We've been talking about this, but I think the thing we were kind of harping on before the show started was this kind of user like this UI that they have, like going through all these apps. And, like to me, it still reminds me of, like like I hate saying it's like the Juju Rev Two, <laughs> where like you're having these neighborhood of apps and like you're using the crown, it's a brutal touch screen, force sure. touch. <laughs> like it, that part seems so unintuitive, the non-Siri aspect of this seems really bad. Dieter, how much of the, of the interface and like switching between apps did you get to see, and what was your take on that? Just a bit. I mean, I will say that I, I agree with you that this idea of like zooming out to the universe and then zooming straight into the neighborhood. By the way, shouldn't there be like a range between universe and neighborhood? Um, it's a little bit weird, and then you know <laughs> you you pan around and you, you open the app. But I mean, you've got app, uh, and then you've got the this, uh, this these glance cards or whatever we're calling them on the bottom, uh, and then you've got the custom app, the messaging app that you can launch from anywhere with that button on the side, and then you've got watch faces and they're customizable. Um, I think that there's there's a there's a fidgetiness to this thing that uh, like is kind of insane. You know, you look at an Android phone and you have to spend a half a day setting it up, moving your widgets, figuring out what icons are on the home screen, what icons are in the app drawer, and just messing around with it. And you get an Android Wear watch, and like there's nothing to do. It's just there. Um, with the iPhone, it's the exact opposite. You get an iPhone, like you just have your home screen and your apps, and it's very simple. But you get the watch, and you've got all these watch faces. And then inside the watch faces, you need to customize the watch faces. And then you have these apps, and you got to scroll around to the apps and like learn how to move all that stuff. And you've got um, a touch, and then you've got a force touch, which is a weird UI thing, and I don't, I don't understand why it's not just a long press. And then you've got the dial. Um, all of that said, uh, you know, I, I don't want to prejudge and say this thing is like overly complicated because I haven't actually had time to set up my own yet, and it might be that it just feels natural and intuitive. Uh, but you know, Apple said that you know, for the watch, they needed to come up with a revolutionary UI that f worked for the wrist, and uh, they've definitely created something different. Uh, whether or not it will actually feel as intuitive as Apple's other products, you know, we just won't know until we spend more time with it. Right, and that's actually that's something interesting I want to kind of talk about. You mentioned the. Um Oh, what was it? What was it? Um, the force touch. So it doesn't make sense yeah. on our end, like what difference between a long press touch, force touch, what they're saying that. Do you feel the difference when you're like when you're trying it out? What that force touch really is? Uh, I don't. It doesn't give you the taptic feedback uh, depending on the touch. Uh, if, if you just tap it harder, basically, is is what it comes down to. And again, I haven't actually had a chance to use the working unit because they're holding that on uh, Apple employees' wrists, at least right, right. in the initial hands-on area. Um, but I will say, actually, speaking of the the vibration, uh, they made a big deal about it being very subtle and like personal to you and not really obvious. And they're actually right. Uh, when other smartwatches uh, vibrate, like you can hear it across the room, especially say the Pebble. But this thing, it vibrates. You definitely feel it. Uh, but like you can't hear it, and it's not broadcasting. Hey, I've got a notification. It's like it is a very subtle thing. 
That's that's interesting, and I think that's uh, yeah, that, that's definitely something that I've noticed with uh, with the G Watch. Certainly right. is. Um, in fact, it, just uh, the other night, I was I was in bed, and the way that I knew that I had gotten a text message was because I heard the G Watch across the room, not because I heard the phone sitting next to me. So <laughs> that is a very real issue. Yeah. Um, I don't know, did really you have any other questions for Peter? Um, well, I, I, I have the, the most important question for Dieter, I think. The question oh, really? that is on everyone's mind, which is, uh, A, are you buying uh, next week? And B, uh, if so, the 4.7 or the 5.5? Man, it's hard. <laughs> I came in here expecting, I came in here expecting 4.7, done. Uh, but now, after holding the 5.5, uh, the only question is whether or not it's too tall. It's not too wide for me to use. Um, that uh, that double tap the the touch ID button to bring down the screen uh, is actually kind of interesting. Uh, I couldn't get it to work consistently, but it, it did work. And then you could reach those elements for apps that don't support the swipe. Um, and the idea that I'll be able to turn the 5.5 into landscape and, and have it work like a little tiny baby miniature iPad is actually pretty compelling. Um, so I don't know, man. I'm, I'm going to need another week to think about it, but luckily I've got till Friday to pre-order. Uh, but I'm definitely getting an iPhone. I'm way too excited about Apple Pay to not get an iPhone. Um, I know we didn't uh, we didn't bring it up, but uh, it's a really big deal. We have uh, I have personally spent the past five years watching every single company on the planet just screw up mobile payments. And Tim Cook on stage actually he said it best. He said that everybody's failed at mobile payments because they were worried about their own vested interests instead of worrying about the customer experience. Um, and the fact that Apple seems to be doing this securely, and they seem to be doing it in such a way where they're not collecting information, uh, I think it's going to be a really big deal, and it's the thing that is going to lock me into using an iPhone for the next two years, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree, and we actually said the same thing before we brought you on, the fact that they're identifying the business model getting in the way uh, as being what has prevented mobile payments from taking off. I think that that really hits the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, the only question is, um, uh, you know, are, are they going to be able to use this as a selling point for the iPhone? Will they pull people into the fold with this? Or is it just going to be um, a value add for existing iPhone subscribers? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Or I, iPhone owners, I should say. Well, I, I actually don't think that's a question at all. I think that they're going to they're they're sell iPhones no matter what. The question is, are they going to be able to get all of the retailers and banks and everybody else to get behind a single standard and actually have mobile payments work? and not be garbage and a confusing and you never know what's going to work and what's not going to work. And from that end, uh, I'm really hopeful. Apple is literally the first company who hasn't lied to my face about mobile payments. And if nothing else, I'm grateful for that. Um, and I mean, it sold me, but I'm like a, a forward looking nerd. I imagine once, you know, once we get a year of Apple Pay under our belts and people see the experience everywhere, it's going to start selling a lot of other people. Well, as an eternal optimist, uh, I always say, uh, uh, as goes Starbucks, uh, so goes the entire industry, and they have Starbucks on board. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that uh, that the uh, that everything's looking up for uh, for Apple Pay. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Dieter, I think we're gonna head out with you soon. Yeah. But uh, anything else you want to talk about before you go? Man. Uh it was a real bummer to only be able to catch half a song from U2, but it seemed like they, they were rocking. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> well, you can go download their free album now. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, man. Dieter, thank you so much. All right. Um, Thanks, guys. So I do want to talk about a little more of the design thing, because yeah. it is um, something I was thinking about when Dieter was talking. There you go with the slap bracelet again. Thank you. Well, just like your watch was in the way. Um, the thing I want to talk about with that is, and it was going back to remember what the iPad looked like when it first came out, what the iPhone looked like when it first came out, um, which were not, you know, especially in retrospect, they're not, I would say, great designs. Like, the iPhone was, you know, revolutionary at the time because there's nothing else like it, but right. it, now it looks terrible. I still say, even when the iPad came out, it was just, it was ridiculed, it looked terrible. Um, I don't know if I'd say it looked terrible. I think that that at that time, uh, the the precedent that they were setting in the industry, both with the original iPhone and also with the original iPad, gave them more flexibility for putting out a design that wasn't necessarily the absolute best that that form factor could be. Um, it, they right. were first generation products, right? And I think so. I see where you're going with this. You're, you want to talk Apple Watch. Right. I, to to an extent, I actually just want to address with people saying this. Like, we're getting a lot of questions. About, like, thank you for knowledge and designs, Ben. I, I don't know if I can say that this time because I've seen first generation Apple devices before, and like, yeah. this feels actually not bad for what it is. 
the functionality, the software doesn't feel there. And I'm sure that's right. one of those things like, I will want to wait for the second generation. I don't know if I can hold off. See, I, I, I don't know financially. if, if I, I'm honestly not sure if I agree. I think that, that, um, that the first generation Apple Watch, uh, what we saw today looks to me very much like a generation one product, right? right. I'm sure that if you were to, to sit uh, Johnny Ive down in a room and be like, look, dude, like real talk, is this, <laughs> is this the product that you want? <laughs> Did you have all of the technology and all the capability uh, at your fingertips to make the product that you really wanted to make? There's no way that he'd say, yes, this is exactly the product that I wanted to make, right? Like, right. because the, the display is square even though the, 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 the UI elements that they showed on screen, many of them were obviously optimized for a round display, right? So, really? Um, I mean, yeah, I, like the watch okay, faces yeah. that they showed, yeah, uh, you know, round, a round watch face on a square display always looks silly. Um, and round displays are definitely still in their infancy. Uh, there haven't been many of them. 360 is kind of an outlier there. Um, and uh, we heard rumors of flexible displays, and and actually, the, apparently, this display is technically flexible, but okay. it isn't it isn't curved, of course. Uh, so maybe there's some opportunity there. I think there are probably some um, people who are looking for a fitness wearable who are saying this isn't anything like what I want. Right. Um, and. Uh, the fact that they're targeting a 2015, sort of a vague 2015 launch and made no mention of battery life during the event leads me to believe that there are still some open questions about how this battery is going to perform. And everything that we've seen with Android Wear devices suggests that there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's some mismatch there, right? There's there's mismatch between the the, the battery technology they have available, the, the energy density they can get out of them, and what they, they're trying to do with the processors in, the, in these devices. So... They have some things that they need to figure out there. Um, and I think that if you look at the Apple Watch in five, seven years, just like we're doing now with the iPhone, and then you look back to this first generation Apple Watch, you're gonna say, well, that was kind of, it, it was kind of insane was that, that we were all yeah, using yeah. that. Um, impressive for a Gen 1 device, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's gonna be a huge seller, just like the original iPhone was. But um, I, I do think there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, and I think that Apple is, you know, obviously poised to take advantage of that. They have 150 billion in the bank. They can do pretty much whatever they want, um, and they have the very best technology and fabrication techniques available to them. So I think that, um, you know, they'll probably move to around at some point. They'll probably have a, a whole portfolio of devices. They'll, they'll, you know, have a fitness-focused one. They'll have a round one. They'll have different uh, materials. They'll go thinner. Uh, they'll put different kinds of batteries in there. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a huge and growing space for them. See, here's what I'm interested in. Like, so this is obviously not a manu like this is not like a mass produced item yet. Right. Um, and it looks thinner, it's thinner than like the Moto 360, as Dieter pointed out. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the size of Pebble. Once they figure out the battery life, we start seeing these like closer production models. Will this get thicker, or are they just going ahead and saying this is what it's going to look like, without question? Because like the straps can stay the same. Yeah. This could just stick out a little bit more once they figure out. What actually it takes to like last a full day? And oh, so, for so, this generation at least. So you're you're suggesting that the that the production watch could get thicker. I think so. I mean, unless they're like they didn't they didn't really mention the thickness of the watch. Not on looked. stage, but I, I I can't imagine that would be unprecedented for Apple to release a device that didn't look exactly like what they gave hands-ons with. There there would be absolutely no precedent for that. I mean, look, anything's possible, right? But I think right. that that. That would be a pretty bizarre scenario. But it's also bizarre, like they they didn't come out and like tell battery life. If it's not good now, right. then what is it? Is it software? Is it just literally physical? Well, they've they've effectively given themselves a solid six months uh, right. to to fiddle with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that they can. There's probably tons of software op optimization they can do. Uh, they probably have some wiggle room on chipsets. Maybe they're waiting on a new chipset or a new fabrication technique for an existing chip that will reduce power draw. Um, maybe they're going to say, okay, we need to be more aggressive about when and how we turn off the display when you're not using it. They, I'm, you know, there are lots of things that they can do to like kind of eke out extra minutes. Um, and, and I'm sure that they're going to do that. But I, I, I can't imagine them making a, a material change to the appearance of the device between now and then. I think they'll, they'll just keep, I mean, I, I think back to the, uh, remember the white iPhone 4? Right. Where there's like, <laughs> sorry guys, it's, it, it's, <laughs> no, it's done goofed. Yeah, it's no bueno. We're, we're just going to hold it back until it's good and ready. Um, and if, if you know, push came to, to, came to shove, I think they'd probably do that again with the, the Apple Watch. Right, although I, I can imagine this like being the same as, I could imagine being just a little bit thicker, like a millimeter, and no one's yeah. going to know, because no one's doing the hands-on with a millimeter. We should have brought a ruler. 
because it's hands on. No, no, a caliber. A caliber, which yeah. is a caliber. <laughs> and just like, okay, I'm gonna need to know these numbers now. Yep. We'll check on the measurements again in six months. Yeah. Uh, I do wanna talk about this more. I do wanna kind of get into like your own personal feeling where you put your money where your mouth is on this one. But yeah. first, uh, we finally had the iPhone 6 and uh, 6 Plus hands on. I've been dying to see this. So let's, uh, let's check that out and we'll be right back. Here we are at Apple's big event with two really big iPhones. This is the iPhone 6, and as you probably already know by now, it comes in two sizes. This is the 4.7 inch device, and this is a 5.5 inch device. It feels pretty massive, uh, but it doesn't feel uh, so massive that it's completely unwieldy. It's uh, pretty narrow, so compared to really giant Android phones, it's not too bad to hold in one hand. Now, if we compare these models to the iPhone 5S, you can see here, that it is uh, quite a bit bigger, the 4.7 is. Uh, however, it is thinner, and uh, the buttons are a little bit nicer. They've got this, uh, this iPad-style button here, a nicer ringer switch. On the back, the camera sticks out a little bit, but you still have the true tone flash. So there's one more feature that's really worth noting on the new iPhone 6. If you double tap, you don't press, you just tap on the Touch ID home button it pulls down the screen so that you can reach the stuff at the top. There are a lot of apps that don't support the back gesture and so it's convenient to just be able to double tap on that thing to bring down stuff from the top of the screen so you can hit those buttons. So we've got a faster processor in here, it's the A8, uh, and it's running iOS 8 of course with uh, the new HealthKit app which works with the Apple Watch. Uh, but the really exciting thing, at least with the 5.5, is you can turn it into landscape and you get some extra features. So if we jump into messages here, you can see you've got a two-tone, two-pane thing here you can look at. And then when you go into portrait, you actually get little avatars, whereas on the 4.7 inch model, when you go into messaging, you don't get those avatars. So not only do they just give you a bigger screen, they also give you more information on each screen. And then when you turn it sideways, you can see you get different interfaces there. Both of these models are available for pre-order on Friday, and they should be available for sale on September 19th. The 4.7 inch starts at $199 on contract, and the larger 5.5 starts at $299 on contract. And then it goes up as you get more storage. Okay, see, look, that 5.5 inch doesn't look bad. I mean, okay. What? <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, look, there's a reason they're making two sizes, right? It's because different people want different sizes, and they're addressing that market need, and I think that they're going to sell a lot more iPhones because of it. Um, you know, having just a 4-inch model, I think, was starting to actively hurt them uh, when you see literally every Android, flagship Android phone on, on the market move between 4.7 and 5.5. Um, and they uh, they just needed to, to up their game. Um, and so I think that they're gonna sell way, way, way more devices um, in the next couple of quarters because of this this two-pronged strategy. 5.5 um, just isn't for me. I mean, it's, 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 it's not fun carrying around a phone that big and it's not fun holding a phone that big. Uh, but I will say that making, a, a, making it that thin, I'm sure is gonna have a, an impact too. That's good. Right, not to mention, the idea, of course, is like if you can keep it in your pocket and do everything in your watch, right. whatever, it doesn't matter how big it is. Right. That's um, true, yep. So let's let's kind of start wrapping up. Um, I wanted to talk about you two for another hour, but John <laughs> is in my ear telling me not to do that. He's literally crying at the control booth. I can see him. Uh, so let's let's just start kind of wrapping up and talk about like money where your mouth is. Yeah. Obviously, we spend a lot of money. This is where we spend all our budgets, more than rent and utilities at this point. Yes. Uh, are you going to get the iPhone, and are you starting to think about the iWatch as well? So the here's Apple Watch. Here's what's going to happen. Here's how it's going to go down. Uh, and this has been the case for the past two or three uh, years now. What's going to happen is I'm going to tell you to your face right now okay. that I'm not going to get the iPhone 6 or 6 Plus. And I know you're full of shit. Uh, yes, next okay. Friday I will, um, at 3 a.m., I will be in line somewhere. Oh, you'll, um, you'll be in line. You're not going to... No, because I'll make it past this Friday without pre-ordering, and I'll be very proud of myself. Okay. I'll be like, look, guys, I'm, I'm staying committed. I'm staying the course. Uh, look at that, look at that. Tell but, me you don't, want, you don't want that. What, the big one? The 6 Plus? Either of them. Bigger than better. But, and look, you know what's even better than that? It's not Jimmy and, you know, Justin, like, bantering. That's true. Which, I love them both. It's just not the best, like, the best of them. No, no, they, they weren't at their finest. That's true. Um, and they were also, it was, it, you know, you have, like, these two superstars, uh, and... Apple spent, what, like 10 seconds with them and then yeah. moved on, which is kind of funny. Um, no, I, look, I, I think that this is a great evolution for the iPhone. I think that they did a lot of things that they needed to do. The, the 
going to a bigger size, even for the small uh, model, was important. But more importantly, just having two sizes is going to be huge for them. Um, and the Apple Watch, I, I really want to reserve judgment right now. I'm not thrilled with the Square. I'm not really thrilled with the ID in general. Uh, and I have a lot of questions about the UI. But you know, it's way too early to, to decide if that's they did the right thing or not. So we'll, we'll see early next right. year. And I know you've been talking about like how Moto X is the best Android smartphone. Like mm -hmm. I love the first Moto X, so I'm excited about yeah. this too. Yep. Would you do the Moto X plus the Moto 360 combination? Is that something you would actually consider now? That's that's what I intend to get this month, yeah. Right. I mean, it, um, I, I think the customization is huge. Being able to make the phone your truly your own instead of one of 50 million people with the gold iPhone 6s is, is a big deal. Um, and, uh, and they've kind of progressed the UI to the point of, and have stayed true enough, true enough to, to stock Android, where it's just kind of the, in my opinion, the perfect Android package. Uh, but you know, there are questions about that, too. I think the battery life is on the, the short side of acceptable um, with that device. Um, and it is 5.2 inches. Yep. So, um, Again, you know, being very honest with you, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not getting an right. iPhone 6. Next Friday, I will get an iPhone 6. Like, I, I know you'll buy them all. I'm more curious which one you're going to use. Yeah. And I guess, like, looking at this behemoth of a watch right here, like, yeah. the Moto 360 is no big deal for you. It's not... Well, I mean, I mean watch and phone are a very different thing. True, I, you know, true. But if you're um, getting one, you're not, you're not going to get, like, an iPhone and then the 360. Right. The X and then the watch. No, certainly not. Um, and you do kind of have to commit to a platform. And actually that's something that I wish we had more time to talk about and may, maybe we'll save it for another time. The fact that uh, both Apple and Google have very much, I hate to use the term, but they've very much doubled down on platform lock-in with are these very wearables. They're all in on their- uh, They're all in their with their wearables uh, because both uh, Android Wear and Apple Watch are platform exclusive. Um, so, that, you know, you're if you're getting, if you're spending I mean, if you're spending, who knows what the, the Apple Watch edition is going to be, $1,000? I don't know. But, but you know, say you, you buy that, there's no way you're going to be buying a Moto X or a G3 or a GS5 or whatever. Nope. Like, there's no chance. And you are locked in until you, you either turn that, that watch around or you, you replace it, which could be years. And then, even then, like, that's actually a good question. So like, that, that device, it's a piece of consumer te technology. It's going yep. to become obsolete in a matter of one, two, three, one, four two years. years, something like that. Uh, but you, it's, it's gold. Right. <laughs> so then what? I guess you melt down the gold. I don't know. Do you take it to a pawn shop? I don't know, I don't know what the procedure is when you're done with an Apple Watch edition. Um, it's, there's, there's no upgrade plan except just melt the gold. <laughs> melt Not the reusable watch. at all, just melt the damn gold. Melt the watch. Uh, all right, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this again <laughs> yes. because I have a strong feeling there's another Apple event next month. Yeah. We hinted at Apple TV stuff. There's clearly iPad rumors I've been floating about. Yep. So we'll probably be back for that. Yep. Uh, I have to go listen to the YouTube album. Um, we need to go see if there's any other news that has happened. Is happened on TheVerge.com. If you want any more, like, Big analysis, editorial, smart people talking about this. That is theverse.com. We have 90, 100 people up there just writing a ton of stuff right now. Uh, thank you all for joining us so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Control Room. Dieter, Neil, Josh Lowenson, David Pierce, Jordan Oplinger from San Francisco. I'm sure I'm missing someone else. Christian. Christian Maz. Oh, my God. He's going to kill me. Also. I said Josh Lowenson, Sam. Sam Sheffer back here. Sam behind the camera. Trolling, who's already pre-ordered six. He's hacked the system. <laughs> God damn him. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us and stay tuned to theverge.com.